Hey guys, it's MJ, the student at Tree, and we're going to be looking at the 10 things that determine your life expectancy. And I was getting quite interested in this topic when I was looking at mortality tables of different countries. In South Africa, which is my home country, I was quite shocked to see that the life expectancy is as low as 59, whereas in England, it's as high as 81. And when you start looking at these things, you always want to know who's the best, who's the worst. And Japan has the honor of being in first place with a life expectancy of 87. And Sierra Leone, which is an African country, is as low as 38. That's, that's actually very worrying uh, that it's that low. Um, I was also able to find this cool map on Wikipedia that shows the mortality of all the countries. Um, red being bad or very low and green being good and high life expectancy. And now what we're going to do in this video is just look at the top 10 um, reasons that, or the top 10 factors that contribute towards your life expectancy. And the very first one has got quite a big impact, and that is your gender. If you're a boy, um, bad news for you, it means you're more likely to die than your female counterpart. You're going to have a much lower life expectancy than a girl who's the same age as you. Um, the reason for that, well, we're not going to go into it in this video, but it is something to look into. The second big reason, uh, or the second big factor that determines your life expectancy is your smoking status. If you smoke, you're going to die quicker than everybody else. So if you haven't started this bad habit, please don't because you'll get addicted and you're throwing your life away. Number three is your education. Now, just because you have a postdoctorate degree in, I don't know, aeronautical physics or something crazy like that, it doesn't mean that you're going to live longer because you've learned more. No, what they found is people who are educated, who have a schooling or have a college degree or something like that, these people are more aware of the silly dangers in life. You know, they understand the risks associated with, you know, not having safe sex with taking drugs or with abusing alcohol and other substances. Um, so that's what they found with education. Also, education has an impact on the job you get, how much money you receive, which we'll see um, leads to our fourth condition, which is your housing. So if you've got a nice job, you can afford a nice house. And we often take this for granted of having a, a place that has a, a roof over our head and can provide a shelter from the elements. Um, because a lot of people in Africa are living in these little huts and they cramped, there's too many people living in, the, in one room and they don't have proper plumbing so it's not hygienic and disease spreads and it's actually very terrible. So your housing or your living conditions have a big impact on your mortality. Another thing that has a, a big impact and is also related to your shelter is the climate. So if you live in the cold, um, you really need to have a good house to, to defend from the elements. But what they found is worse than the cold is actually um, wet and hot climates. And the reason being is diseases and bacteria, they love to breed in these conditions and they infect more people there and they're more likely to kill someone. So, so diseases like malaria are only in certain climates and that's actually one of the biggest killers in the world. Something that doesn't have as big an impact is genetics, as only um, a specific amount of diseases can be inherited from your parents. Um, but it, it, there still is some sort of effect. That's why when you do purchase life insurance or you go to the doctor or stuff like that, they do ask you about your family's medical history. Uh, another big one is your occupation. So the best job to have as far as life expectancy goes is to be a personal trainer. Uh, someone who's very active and just leading a healthy lifestyle. Um, the worst job to have is the person who pilots those planes that put out fires. Um, they're very dangerous. And um, people who fly those little micro lights to herd sheep like they do in Australia. Because if you make a mistake, you crash the plane and you die. It's, yeah much safer to work in an office, um, although you do want a job that 
where you do get a little bit of walking around time and it's not too stressful. Um, so if any of you guys are looking for the perfect job, it is an actually uh, best job in the world. Okay, number eight is your city infrastructure. Let's say you get stabbed or an accident happens and you need urgent medical attention. If your city is a first world, uh, is in a first world country, uh, you can dial the ambulance, they can come pick you up, they can take you to a hospital and you can be healed, which is great. If you're living in the rural farmlands and something like that happens, well, bad luck to you. Number nine is your political stability. And this also incorporates your crime. Um, the more violent your society is, the more likely you're going to be caught in the crossfire. So you want to stay away from a country that's in a revolution, that has riots, has strikes, um, high crime rate. Um, because yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit uh, obvious. But the next one is not that obvious. And that is your age. The older you are, the more or the higher your life expectancy is going to be. And the reason for that is there's three times in your life where your force of mortality is incredibly high. It's just as you've been born because as a baby, you're very vulnerable and dependent on your parents to take care of you. Um, the second time is when you're a teenager or a young adult. There's actually even a hump in the mortality curve known as the accident hump because people at this age do stupid things uh, like drugs, uh, sex, and there's a quite a high suicide rate there. And then the final last one is when you're a very old person because you're frail and again, you can't take care of yourself and your organs fail and everything. But so what's interesting about this with age is that a toddler's got a higher life expectancy than a newborn baby and a 25 year old will have a higher life time expectancy than a teenager, 15 year old. And that is because they've got past these dangerous zones and the probability of them surviving is now increased. And yeah, those are the 10 things that determine um, your life expectancy. So feel free to apply them to your own life to see, well, how long you're going to live. And just to recap, it was gender, political stability, your housing, genetics, education, your age, smoking status, occupation, city infrastructure, and climate. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and please subscribe. Thank you very much, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers.